Welcome to Kuvulu, the sorcery of copper. In this episode, we will see why the power is not simply the voltage times the current, but because as you can see here, if you multiply 230 times 1 amp almost, you would have 230 watts, but here we only have 160 watts. So we will see what real power is, what apparent power is, and what the power factor is, and everything thanks to the oscilloscope. This will also explain a last time why the spark counter, my electricity meter, isn't really suited for three-phase power supplies. It all started with this electricity meter, which I'm using in the spark counter, a project I presented previously. This is the PSphere PZEM004, and basically on one side you just connect mains, so it gets power, and on the other side you connect the current sensing coil, so it can measure the current which the load is using. And afterwards it shows you the voltage of mains, the current the load is using, the resulting power, and then the energy, so the power used over time. But let's have a look at a concrete example. So here's the very basic setup. I have mains power coming here, and on top of that I connected this power plug. Now in the middle I cut the cables, and this way I'm able to put the current sensing coil on one of the wires, either neutral or phase. It's not really important. And this current sensing coil is connected to the electricity meter, and this way I can measure how much current is used by the load I can plug on this power plug. I've also connected the electricity meter to another port of mains electricity because I don't want the electricity meter to interfere with the measurements on this load here. As first test load we will use this toaster. Basically it's just a heating element to heat up sandwiches. And if we look at the details we see that it uses 220 to 240 volt and 710 to 850 watts. And we'll connect it to a test setup to see how much it really uses. So I've connected the toaster to this power plug, but right now there is no electricity consumption or no power consumption, no current going through, because I switched it off. But as soon as I switch it on, you see that the power goes up and the current is also displayed. And what I've learned from school is that the power in watts is simply the voltage in volts times the current in amps. And this is also the case here. 230 volts times 3.41 is 700 watts, approximately, by head. So this is correct, but let's try another load. For the next test, we will use this stage lamp. It's basically just a lamp, and if we look at the back, we will see that it uses 150 watts, and it's a HQE lamp. Let's have a look at what the lamp does. So here it is connected, and if I switch it on, make some noise, and here we can see that it uses one ampere, but if you look at the voltage, 230 volt times 1 ampere should be 230 watts. But this is only during 76, 77, 78, and it's decreasing watts. So what is going on? Why is it not matching? What better to figure out what's going on than the oscilloscope? So I've connected the oscilloscopes to the cables here. Channel 1, the yellow channel, is connected to the voltage, and we already see that we have 233 volts measured. Channel 2, which is the blue channel, is connected to this current sensing coil. I've changed the unit, but because of the aspect ratio of the ratio of this coil, we still have to multiply the value which is measured by 3. And then I enabled the, the math function. This is the purple waveform which you see here. And it's simply the multiplication of channel 1 times channel 2. So we will have the results in watts, which we also have to multiply by 3 to get the, the real value. And to compare what we've measured here, we will still have the two electricity meters. Power is defined as voltage times current, but at every instant. So whenever you have voltage which is changing over time, or current which is changing over time, then you don't have to forget about the time factor. And this is why, because this is the reason why you cannot simply multiply the average voltage or the RMS voltage times the average current or the RMS current. And here we see that on 
AC mains power, we have an AC waveform, a sinusoidal waveform. So we have voltage which is changing over time. Now, if we enable this toaster, let's enable it, you can see that we have also the current which is changing over time along with the voltage. And if we give a bit of time, we will see that the math function, which you see here in purple, this is voltage times current, but at each instant. So the, the oscilloscope takes each point, multiplies it, and then displays the resulting value. And you can see that the power is also changing over time. Now, to get to measure the power which this is using, you simply take the average of the power over time. This is what you can see here. So there we have the voltage over time, here the current over time, you have to multiply it by 3, and here this is the multiplication of the both, and then average over the whole cycle. And this is the power over time. And this averaging of the power, this is called the real power. And here we are 270 watts, and if we multiply it by 3, because of the factor, um, coil factor, we uh, are around the 780 watts, which actually the power, the electricity meter is measuring. So, again, this you have to multiply each instant and this way you get the real or also called active power the, and um, when you take the average. Now, if you just multiply the voltage RMS times the current RMS, this is called the apparent power. And um, the apparent power is equal to the real power if the waveform are synced. So here we can see that the waveform of the current is synced with the waveform of the voltage. They are both sinusoidal and they don't have any phase difference, almost none. Here they have only four degrees of phase difference. This is what you can see also in the power factor. Now, if the two waveforms are sinusoidal and if they don't have any phase difference, you will find a power factor of one. Now let's have a look at this load, which was puzzling me. So if we enable it, we see that the current is completely off compared to the voltage, at least the phase, but also the form. It doesn't look like a sinusoidal or perfectly sinusoidal wave. And this is important to calculate um, the power, which you see here now in purple. So the real power is actually um, the voltage times the current over time, so each point, and then you average it, which is shown here, and which is also measured by the electricity meter. That's the real power, or the active power, that's also the name it has. Now, if you just multiply the voltage in RMS times the current in RMS, which you see here, measured by the electricity meter, you get the apparent power. And the real power divided by the apparent power, this is called the power factor, which you see here. And as the lamp is heating up, you see that the waveform of the current is nearing the waveform of the voltage. And the phase difference, which you see here, it was previously at 40, now it's at well, 35, it was at 20, you will see it go nearer and nearer. It means that there will be less phase shift between the current and the power. And it also explains why the power factor is increasing. A power factor of, of one means that there are two perfectly sinusoidal waves uh, which have no phase difference. So at some point, maybe this thing would be heat enough so there would be no phase difference anymore. But because it still doesn't look like a perfect sinusoidal wave, the power factor will never reach one. But it will still climb up, and here you can see that it, it is climbing up. And if it would be one, it, it would also mean that the um, apparent power, so the voltage times the current RMS, would be equal to the real power which is measure, which is measured here. And now we finally figured out um, what this all means and what I was confused about that, simply because there was, again, the time component. But at least we know now the two errors I made uh, for my three-phase installation, because there are three phases, so you cannot just measure the current on the neutral wire, and because there are phases, it is important that you measure the current to the corresponding phase and not to any of the phases, because else 
the power reading would be completely off. And now that we have all the information, it is time to get a better electricity meter than my spark counter.